conservation of biodiversity. Biological diversity or biodiversity refers to the different types of animals, plants, and microorganisms found in an area. Biodiversity is not distributed evenly on Earth. It is richest in the tropics, and terrestrial biodiversity tends to be highest near the equator. The main causes of biodiversity loss have been identified as habitat change, climate change, invasive alien species, overexploitation, and pollution. Examples of what the GEF Small Grants Program in Kenya is doing to support actions that address the conservation of biodiversity include support to the Bodo, Mwazaro, and Funzi Island Beach Management Unit in Kwale County, South Coast, to rehabilitate the mangroves and restore the nesting sites of hawksbill, leatherback, and green turtles that are classified as endangered by the World Conservation Union, IUCN. CORGEO, which stands for Coastal Oceans Research and Development in the Indian Ocean, is facilitating communities to set up community marine conservation areas and to eradicate destructive fishing gears. We carry out research along the coast of Kenya. In most of our activities, we work with the, the coastal communities, we work with fishermen, and the major problems that the small-scale fisheries along the Kenyan coast uh, is having, and one of them is overfishing in very important areas such as the fish spawning aggregation areas and also in the coral reef areas which are major breeding areas for the fish. So we are working with um, fishermen and other coastal communities to be able to conserve these areas and for them to be able to understand why is it that they need to conserve these areas and what are the kind of inputs, what can they do to be able to conserve these areas. The UNDP SGP program or project is really going to help us to be able to achieve uh, as much as possible uh, many community conservation areas where fishing communities are going to be engaged in uh, creating community conservation areas and having these areas work to conserve biodiversity, to conserve the fish uh, for their livelihoods and uh, even for other recreation activities that they can plan within these areas. Sisiwa ni mbadu ulianza makaifu moja mia saba Waka tusaidia kutupa pesa kidogo Tuka jenga hile bodo Sasa hile bodo kundo tunatia pesa za kusumeshi ya watoto Kwa skuli, kwa peka skuli, second school Sabo zamani mama zetu kwa apeleki watoto wanake Second kwa apeleki Tukaonelea hili wafike mbele na wao Tuwasumeshi, tuatile juhudi waendele mbele sisi kwa, kwa kweli tumeanza kuhifadhi wasini bimiu ma, mazingira ambayo tumeelimisha vijana kuso mambo ya drugs na also pia tume, tume, tumezidi kuendeleza vijana kuhusu kuhusu mambo ya ecotourism tunapongeza zaidi kwamba bimiu imetusaidia sana kuwalipa walimu nursery schools na manasi ambao kusaidia kwa dispensary pia wana boardwalk wamefanya conservation ya mangrove wanalinda mazingira upande wa mangroves kwa kweli watu wa Kenya nzima waje kutembelea asanteni Alien invasive species compete with indigenous species often resulting in serious changes to the composition of plants and animals in an area In Laikipia County the Mpala Research Center and Kabi are rearing and distributing an insect Dactylopus opuntiae that feeds on the prickly pear cactus Opuntia stricta that was originally from America and that is spreading at an alarming rate and reducing pastures for livestock. The award-winning Muliru Farmers Conservation Group is supporting about 400 rural households to cultivate an indigenous medicinal plant that was overexploited and providing processing and marketing facilities to improve revenues and reduce pressure on the Kakamega forest. The acreage under Oximum kilimanscaricum has increased from 2.5 hectares in 2005 
to 20 hectares in 2014. In order to conserve wildlife habitats and enhance the livelihoods of communities, the Kenya Wildlife Conservancies Association is implementing a strategic project to develop the capacities of communities to set up and successfully run community conservancies. I work for Kenya Wildlife Conservancies Association, an umbrella body for conservancies in Kenya, which uh, aims to bring them together to take care of our wildlife. Um, we have only, most of the wildlife in Kenya, 75% of them are in community lands. And more recently, um, human settlements, fencing, land subdivision, destruction of the habitat has represented a serious challenge for wildlife. And, and yet wildlife uh, is, a, is, is the major attraction for our tourism and therefore a, a very important contributor of our, uh, our foreign exchange to our economy. Um, and under the small grants program, we were able to reach out to the communities. We were able to uh, develop a, a, a program that uh, ensured that the voice of the community was being heard under the, poli and under the policy processes. We are uh, able to collect recommendations on the Wildlife Act, on the regulations of the Wildlife Act, and we also managed to make sure that they are aware of the benefits that they can uh, derive by conserving wildlife on their land. Basically, that uh, the land that has been set aside by a landowner uh, to conserve wildlife. But when you're talking about conservation, there has to be benefits that come with it. Conservancy is not just a conservation tool, it's also a beneficial to the landowner. There are multiple benefits for the conservancy. Number one, it's a business model, you can invest in tourism. Um, Conservancies create a lot of employment for both the youth, the old. Um, it's basically also a tool for governance. It improves the governance structure of the community. So it comes with multiple benefits, not just uh, bringing conservation, conserving wildlife, but also improving the livelihoods of communities. So Naibunga covers about five key projects. We have the issues of rentland, we have the issues of security, we have the issues of wildlife management, we have issues of enterprise, mainly focusing on women, and then the other one is governance and capacity building. So those are the key main operations. With the uh, SDP funding again, we've had a system where the communities uh, have um, grazing agreements with the private big ranchers. This has helped over time. But again, the, the challenge that we've been trying to look at as the Naibunga Community Conservancy is that um, we might continue getting grass from the private ranchers, but for how long? Number two, we cannot ignore uh, our own land because the ranchers cannot be our land. So the idea is that um, for you to get grazing quotas within the private ranchers, you have to continue practicing plant grazing or holistic management within your group ranches. So usually with the night bombers, night bombers is one of the concepts where within the holistic management you put cows for seven days in bare land for the hooves of the cattle to break the topsoil of the, of the bare service. And usually during the overnight stays they put in the dung which fertilizes the land. Usually once there is rain there is very nice regeneration of grass. So we want to protect some of the sites to become like grass banks or seed banks so that we can harvest those seeds and plant them in other places. So in essence, this is the whole um, issue we are trying to address with the UADP, SDP funding and also through the community goodwill. Right now, Naibonga is no longer a small program. It's really a program that is uh, community managed. Why they came together is because of insecurity. There was no security of grazing, there was no security of wildlife, there was no security of uh, livestock. So they considered themselves and formed Naibonga. So that's why they said we should come together because we have common problems. And right now what they are doing is that they have gone to another, another upper level of including other stakeholders to come in, uh, like the GEF SGP program, which is now scaling up some of the program that has been going on, particularly in the Rangeland Rehabilitation Program in Naibonga. We make sure that the, the, the resources that we pull are used and it goes directly to what is intended. 
The Maasai Wilderness Conservation Trust is promoting better range management practices among the members of the Kuku Group Ranch. Uh, we basically have conservation activities, but we also provide other conservation benefits uh, in form of education and uh, health services to the community because we believe in holistic approach to conservation. Um, the Kuku community came to a realization that they were destroying their own uh, uh, ecosystem and by extension they were destroying their own livelihoods through unsustainable land use practices and uh, they approached Maasai Wilderness Conservation Trust for assistance in coming up with a, a sustainable way of uh, managing their grazing within the ranch. And uh, I must say the process has been uh, good and uh, we are now almost at the final stage of developing the, the plan and involved the community in each and every step towards uh, the development of the plan. Uh, because the community uh, was involved in each and every step, uh, they own the process and uh, they own the outcome of the process as well. So we believe this is going to be something that is uh, sustainable and we not just do uh, the, uh, the grazing uh, management plan. We also looked at uh, the, the restoration of the degraded land uh, by focusing on the, the restoration of the wetlands through what, what we call the wetland ecological restoration catchments whereby we come up with the structures that are going to help restore the wetlands within the ranch. And the, the importance of doing that is to improve the health of, uh, of the ranch land as well as provide uh, the much needed uh, water for the community, uh, especially during uh, the dry seasons.